Hey folks, thanks for joining me today. So today we're going to be doing a stone from the Happy Dotting Company mold of the large oval. So I have a few of these um, and I've always struggled with what to put on them because of their shape. So I came across an image quite some time ago, I guess, and I was scrolling through my photos uh, one day and I found this that I had saved like, I don't know, maybe a year ago. And I was like, that's what I can paint on the oval stone. So I thought, what better way to share my excitement than to film it and put it up for you guys to watch me do it. So I started off with uh, the oval stone and I painted it black on the back and then I painted it white on the front. I use deco art like I do with all of my rocks. Uh, they're the best for primer, I find. They're good for all sorts of things, but it's what I use the most for primer. primer. And then um, I used my Charcoal Generals pencil uh, to go in and sketch out the design. And now what I'm doing is I'm using that same white and I'm just basically filling in everywhere there's going to be the design. So if you saw the thumbnail in the beginning, um, then you know we're doing a horse. So I have to do it. So we're doing a horse, of course. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I just, I had to. Uh, so anyways, yeah, we're going to do uh, paint up a cute little horse today. I called him Quirky uh, because uh, he is a bit quirky. And uh, we're going to be doing a lot of blending. So um I did the whole design as uh, white, so I have my outline. And now I'm going in with one of those fine lining brushes that I got from Amazon. They're for makeup, like a makeup applicator or something, but I find they work amazing for this kind of stuff. I do have my other fine lining brush that I made myself. And if you're interested in doing that, I do have a tutorial in my repertoire. And uh, I invite you to go and check it out um, as well as uh, I have some videos for how to do resin, how to cast your own stones. And I believe they're all linked in the description below. So make sure that you check that out. Um, another thing that is linked in the description, well, it's not linked, but it's listed in the description, is all of the brand name and color names that I use in each tutorial. So. If I forget to tell you uh, what color I'm using or um, maybe I misspoke and I gave you the wrong color name or the wrong make, uh, it is all in the description below. So make sure you check that out at the end of the video. So right now I'm using that uh, makeup applicator brush um, and I am applying Spice Brown from Delta. And then I'm using one of my blending brushes that I also found on Amazon. And again, the link is in the description below. And I'm just blending it all out, getting rid of all of those brush strokes that the brush left and just to sort of even it all out. Then I go on with one of my finger sponges or daubers. And again, you can find a link in the description below so you can get your own set if you would like. Um, and I'm using Spice Tan from Delta. And I am sponging that into the forehead of my little quirky horse here. And um, yeah, I'm just uh, blending it all in. And then I'm bringing down the true color or the actual color straight down uh, into his muzzle. Now I'm going to do the same thing here for his neck. And again, same application. I'm using the little fine lining brush or makeup applicator brush and I'm putting on that uh, spice tan, sorry, spice brown color. And then I will go in with my finger dauber and blend that all in again with the spice brown that I use just to uh, give a little bit of shading so that he's got, it's a little bit lighter right at the front, like where his chest would be, and then it goes out darker to the outsides. So that gives sort of uh, an idea that it is, you know, more of a um, uh, 3D kind of, because his neck does round up. Um, so then what I'm using here is actually the Spice Tan, 
mixed with a little bit of white just to make it a little bit lighter and this is what his muzzle is going to be so that's where his big nostrils are going to be and here I'm doing them now and all I did was I added just a little bit more white to that spice tan color and really I'm only using um, like six or seven different colors uh, so and all I'm doing is just adding white to get a lighter version of the actual color and it works really well because you're using it all in the horse and um, it, it's great it's less mess as well you don't have to use up as many wells in your tray um, yeah and it just it works it, he ends up looking absolutely adorable so I can't wait for you to see the ending um, because I'm just I, I love this guy this guy's so cute um, I should also mention too that the background is true red from Americana and what I did was I used a wet brush so I didn't do um, like dip my brush straight into the paint and then go right at it to get nice and thick coverage. What I did was I diluted it by putting my paintbrush into the water first and then just grabbing some of the paint. And that's how I get these uh, white washes that are shining through in the background. So that's how I got that kind of effect. Um, and now I'm just doing some touch-ups. You saw me uh, color in his ears. So the color that I used for that was Indiana Rose from Delta. Um, I have a lot of old paints and I'm just sort of trying to use them up so that I can replace them with some uh, new brands, new colors. And I have to tell you that um, this is just a little side story as I'm painting away here that I uh, had run out of um, Kelly Green. So I went to the store and I bought a new bottle of Kelly Green and I brought it home and it is totally not the same shade. So just be careful that when you have a color that you really like that if you are going to go and buy another one, maybe take the bottle with you so you can pair the colors because I was extremely disappointed. The, the Kelly Green that I ended up getting was a lot darker than the actual Kelly, Kelly Green that I've been using. So I'm going to have to go back to the store with my bottle in hand and see if I can find the one that matches. Um, so that's just uh, food for thought uh, and just make sure that you're mindful of that. So you may have seen that uh, some lines magically appeared on the painting of the horse here. I used my white General's Charcoal Pencil uh, to add on the detail lines again. So because I covered them all up when I painted the, the browns onto um, his face and onto his neck. So I needed to get those back so I knew where I needed to outline and maybe do some fix ups. So that's what I'm doing right now with his ears. I found that one of the pink areas or the inside of his ear was larger than the other. Sometimes that's okay because it depends on the direction the horse is holding his ear. However, it was just way too big. So at least for me. So very simple and easy. All I did was I went in with some black paint and I outlined it and then came in with my dark brown paint and just fixed it all up. And voila, there you go. You've got some uh, fresh new ears that look a little bit more symmetrical to each other, or at least same size. <laughs> so um, I was uh, really excited about doing this guy. And uh, I have to tell you that I was so excited when I found the picture in my many, many photos. Uh, I take screenshots all the time. Um, I do realistic painting as well on some of my Mad River rocks and I take pictures when I'm out on hikes and um, end up painting those onto my Mad River rocks. So uh, my phone is loaded. I'm constantly getting that notification saying that I, my iCloud is almost full. <laughs> so I've been trying to go through them and deleting the ones that I no longer need. Um, and keeping the ones that I really want. So it's been a slow proce process, but it's been great uh, walk down memory lane. So now what I'm doing is I'm just outlining uh, the outside of the horse, uh, doing his um, muzzle, bringing it uh, down from his forehead down uh, to his 
very big nostrils and I'm just using my fine lining brush that I created myself. This one here I created not too long ago and um, I actually was a little bit afraid at first because I thought I cut off too many bris bristles or too many hairs or whatever on the paintbrush but it ended up working out amazing like it it gives me the best fine lines I've ever had. Okay so now you just saw me do a line there it's going to disappear. I don't know why I put that line there but I do uh, paint over top of it because it looks like I don't know he's got a I don't know a scar or something on his bottom lip so I don't know what I was thinking there but I do fix that up. Um, so now I'm just doing the outline of his nostrils just using my fine lining brush and some black paint and got to put in a little bit of wrinkles there because he's kind of flaring his nostrils there and then I've got to give it some depth so I just do these little half moons there fill them in with black and it uh, makes it look 3D. So um, that's what I do with the nostrils. I do it along the edges too on the outsides just so that um, it looks a little bit more, not realistic, but more cartoony, I guess. And then of course we got to top off those nostrils and uh, then I've got to work on his eyes. So I just, again, I use my fine lining brush. I draw a circle with it and then I just fill it in and I do it for both. Now I will tell you, you can see just by the whites of his eyes, I am so bad at getting things to equal propor proportions and eyes are my worst, especially when someone, something or someone or in this case, the horse is looking straight at you. I cannot get the pupils the same size. I cannot get um, the whites of the eyes the same size. I just, it doesn't matter what I do. I just, I can't do it. So what I do to fix that or to help me with that, I've put some eyelids on them. Then I can go in and I can make the pupil a little bit bigger if I need to and make them equal sizes. And that's how I get away with it. So that's my little tip and trick, I guess, for this. Um, so of course, this guy's got to have a mane. And what I did, and it's hard to see here, but what I did was I took some of the spice tan and white but I didn't completely mix it together so I basically picked up both of the colors at the same time on my paintbrush so when I do paint it um, it automatically does the two different colors at the same time so you're not going back in and repainting again and putting in the extra colors it's like a, a one-step process um, I think it's um, Folk art does a lot of the style uh, or one stroke uh, painting. Uh, I'm not very familiar with it. I have watched some videos, but I haven't done it myself. But I guess this is sort of like that. I'm not sure. Um, but it worked. And that's why I liked to do that, 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 do that that way. Oh boy, I must have my new tongue in today. I don't know. A little bit of tongue tied there. Anyways, we'll just move on from that. Um, so as you see, I'm still uh, putting in uh, some of the color for his mane uh, that's flopped over on his forehead there. And um, he was so fun to do, honestly. Um, if you liked it, let me know. Just give me that thumbs up. Uh, it's the best way to let me know. But you can also leave me a, a comment down below. And I love reading your comments. I love um, answering your comments. It helps me understand my audience and who you are and um, if you have any ideas that you want me to uh, try and paint uh, just let me know uh, I would love to help out and uh, be challenged if you will and if you're new to my channel make sure you subscribe because I have a lot of different tutorials that I've planned that are coming up I've got Mother's Day coming and I've got um, another stone like this one that I will be doing. Um, I've got some more bling bling and some uh, glitter paint and things like that. So um, make sure you subscribe and ring the bell. Anyway, so um, and one of the things that I'm going to be bringing to you guys, I just wanted to mention very quickly, is something I've never broadcasted before. But it is something that I do, I sell a lot of at my craft shows. So 
I wanted to bring the tutorial to you on how to do it. So stay tuned for that. It will be coming up probably in the next three or four weeks, um, but it's perfect for spring. So um, keep, keep your eye out for that and uh, definitely uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. So um, you may notice now that I'm going back and I'm repainting the main. I found that the black um, outline was too thick and I put too many thin lines in. So it kind of made it look too busy. So I just went in and repainted over top of it once it was dry. And that way um, I could get it to be the way that I wanted it to be. That's the beauty of using acrylic paint. Just let it dry and paint over top of it. And there you have it folks, life is what you make it, so get creative. Mm -hmm.